All right, guys. So this is the first of the two cylinders. Um, this is my one pound. <clears throat> I want you guys to notice, I don't necessarily start with a ball. If I start with a ball and it's something round, especially when I start getting larger, I may put it on here. And as I start to center, it traps air under here. Not many sure, I'm not sure how many of you have picked up your pots after you've wired them and it's dry. You notice you've got this like sort of route of air. Um, I think that happens from starting with a ball as compared to sort of this gumdrop schmoo grimace shape. Just gives you a little bit more surface area. So this is our one pound clay and this is how I would throw my one pound clay. I lock my elbow into my hip bone. That's between six and seven, the heel of my hand. My right hand is gonna be on top. I'm gonna to start to push down to make it stick and now full speed. Now, I can center this ball of clay by just leaving my hands right here. If the clay has been wedged well or just came out of the bag, I could literally sit right here. And if you keep your hands as still as possible, dropping your right wrist to get that shape that's desired, and just keep your hands right here, you can slowly take your hands off and that's centered. Too many people kind of do this, do this. Big mistake that people do is they jump on like this. When you jump your right hand into here and your left hand into here, chances are your waist is just pretty much going to go allow your upper body to go for a ride. But if you lock that in and you treat this as one tool, you could just leave your hands right here. And if you just keep steady pressure, all those little clay grains are going to just end up right where you want them. So now when I open up, wrapping my hands around, now when I say wrap my hands around, I don't mean squeeze. If you squeeze, you're already doing too much to the clay. My hands are more or less leaning down on the bat than they are touching the clay. I'm gonna take my right thumb, just one. If you wanna use one finger, that's fine. I don't suggest this. You may see a lot of people teaching how to do this. My problem with this is sometimes don't, people don't loosen up the pressure. They end up putting a dent in the clay there and a dent in the clay there, when all we're really doing is just having our hands gently down on the back. So I like my thumb. I have a big fat thumb. You guys have all told me, I've talked about the Megan Fox thumb. She may be hot, but her thumbs are very short. So she cannot use her thumbs. So if you wanna use two fingers, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take my right thumb and I'm gonna go down with the tip of my thumb. So I go here. What that does is it creates not just this little skinny hole, but it creates this sort of V shape. What that V shape is gonna do, it's gonna help me get my two fingers inside. When you go straight down, you may only have a very narrow hole. And then when you're putting your two fingers down, you're giving it uneven information. This allows me to get my two fingers all the way down to the bottom. So I'm gonna aim for no foot on these cylinders. I can show you the exact height of what I'm getting. So you can stop it, push this down, and I have about, uh, about a quarter of an inch, a little bit less. So now again, my left hand is here. Notice my hand is at this angle, not this angle. When your hand is at this angle, you're gonna end up with a beehive shape, which is gonna create a much thinner lip. So if I have my right hand perpendicular to the bat, I'm not really doing much, but I'm allowing myself to control it. Two fingers inside, scoop towards, my left palm. So I'm sort of scooping. By scooping, it's going to allow me to get that sort of right angle that I'm aiming for in a cylinder. What I say to people all the time is you don't actually need a cylinder, right? Unless you're making one of these cap jars or a canister, like a, the ones you see on your countertop that um, have sort of that squared off edge. Other than that, the real reason for making a cylinder in my appointment, my opinion, is to learn how to get all the clay up in there. So now we're gonna do what you guys have heard me call the corrective pull. So right now I'm thinner here, thicker here, and chances are you guys are much thinner up here because you didn't have your hand angled this way. So with my first pull, I wanna make this and this even so I don't have to think about it for the rest of the event. So I wet my sponge, I put my sponge down, I use the side of my finger, hands attached, elbows on my thighs, fingertips, not fingerprints, get more done with the fingertips. Start down on the bottom. I'm gonna put no pressure on the bottom. A lot of pressure where it's starting to get thick and almost no pressure at the top. So what I've just done now is now I have a, a wall that's about three quarters of the inch, three quarters of an inch, evenly thick all the way through. 
Okay, so now that my walls are evenly consistent, I'm gonna go back to that sort of medium speed. And with my next pull, I'm gonna start down here, a little less pressure. And I'm gonna aim for a volcano. What do I mean when I say aim for a volcano? Notice that I'm taking both of these fingers and I'm going this way. When I say aim towards the center, I don't mean just aim towards the center with your outside hand because then you're gonna end up with a thinner wall. I mean, both fingers are going towards the middle. My bat is a little loose here, so it's causing a little bit of a problem here, which is why we've got this sort of funky lip. You can hear the bat. So I don't really trim the lip of my pot until I've gotten the wall up. If I trim the lip of my pot now where it's about a half an inch thick, I'm gonna waste more clay. I wait till it's a little thinner. So now I'm gonna straighten it out a little bit. And because it's only one pound of clay, I'm only using my small tools. I'm using the, my pointer finger backed up by my middle finger and my middle finger backed up by my ring finger. I don't need a super big thumb or knuckle or four fingers to really um, pull those walls. Now, a lot of people say thought it was thrown off center, but because I was just a little uneven and the bat was moving, when I trim my lip, my thickness of my walls are still consistent. So that means that I was centered, it means I did open the middle, and it means I didn't throw it off center when I opened the floor. So now I'm gonna scoop down on the bottom again, get a little bit more height, and come up to the top. And don't forget to compress that lip. Now that doesn't mean when we compress the lip that your final mug or cup is gonna have that sort of sharp lip. Um, you can smooth that out later. So now I'm gonna go in here and just sort of straighten that out. Smooth out that lip. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my wood tool and take off the excess. I have other videos um, out there about how I use my wood tool. But for today, I just wanna sorta of talk about my basics. Let's skip those things. So basically what I've done now is I've got myself a cylinder. You can see the inside is pretty cylindrical. Um, I centered with only one, one position. I aim towards the center. Now that was three poles. Um, you can do a cylinder in two poles. Maybe it was four poles. I'm not sure I was correctively fixing the lip. Um, I compress my lip every time. I only use these fingers to pull. I use my thumb to open up. That's a one pound cylinder. Okay guys, this is my two pound cylinder. Um, let me show you the difference between what I do with my one pound cylinder. I want you guys to notice my shape again. So if I wedge the clay, though, I'm gonna wedge in just one direction. Um, I tend to do the ram's head wedge because it's pretty much the only one I know how to do. Um, you've never seen me do a video about how to wedge because I'm really bad at teaching wedging. It's something you have to stand right next to me to watch. I can't really put it into words. But what I do is I wedge it and then that's the direction I'm gonna put it on the wheel. So I go ahead and flatten out my bottom, get rid of any spaces and put it right down. Now, two pounds of clay. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing, left hand locked in. Do not jump onto the side because two pounds going off center is a lot harder. I'm gonna push down with my right hand just to make it stick. My left hand is just sort of stabilizing it so it doesn't go. And now I'm gonna start to speed up my wheel and I'm gonna push down a little harder. And now I'm gonna cone up the clay. Is coning up necessary with two pounds? Um, not necessarily. I can literally stand here just like this and do that same exact sort of thing that I did before with the one pound. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cone up. So in order to cone up, you wanna make sure that you're not flat on the top. Because if you're flat on the top, you are gonna get that volcano shape. So you wanna almost make sure that you're a little pointy. Your left hand is gonna push towards your right hand, heel of this hand, fingers over here. S scoop up that clay on the bottom. That's when your pinky is involved. Pinky never comes to the party except to cone up. Squeeze towards the middle. And if you squeeze towards the middle, the clay has nowhere else to go but up. And then you're gonna follow that clay up 
by closing your hands up into a cone. If you've got a small volcano, I'm gonna tell you it's okay to let it close up, but it's really deep. You wanna peel that back to expose that dry clay. I have a video about how to throw a seven pound cylinder. Um, and I think in there, and maybe my four pound bowl, that'll show you how I peel that back. So now, a lot of people now think they have to center the cone. We don't care about the cone. The reason why we coned it is because we want to center small bits of clay at a time, which is what we're going to do. So we just learned how to center one pound. So that means we can center a quarter pound. Now we're going to put more pressure down on our right hand. Stop there. Left hand is going to push that mushroom back in. So part of the reason why we cone is sometimes it'll help you wedge the clay on the wheel, but it may also help you pop air bubbles from crappy wedging, which is what I just did. Now again, there's that sort of ticking back thing. So I'm just gonna sort of hang out here. Now, if your clay is not quite centered after you've done this first coning, I want you to get rid of the extra stuff that's interfering with that down here. And now we're gonna cone up again, but we don't have to cone up all the way. What we wanna do is we wanna take all these weird spots. And if we push it in, those weird spots are gonna push that uneven, uncentered part to the top. So, just gonna sorta of do that. Clean this up, and now whatever, this is straight now, whatever that is, you can see my fingers going up and down. That weird part pushed up a bump up here. Here, my voice cracked. And now we're gonna sorta of just hang out down here, back here, the same way we did with one pound. There we go. How do we know we're centered? Take that finger and clean up that base. Your side is straight. We're always sort of aiming for this, this sort of cat food can hamburger bun shape. All right, now with slightly larger clay, we're gonna increase the size of our tools. I'm gonna to now go down with two thumbs, but I keep those thumbs tight together. If you separate those thumbs, you get to get that little piece of clay that sticks up. Again, I don't care about that piece of clay, but some people get bothered by it. Fast wheel, remember the jackhammer, and two thumbs go straight down. Maybe they get a little dry, slowly take your hands out. And now we're also utilizing this part of our hand to make sure the clay gets compressed, but we're not squeezing. We don't wanna squeeze, because then that will start to create your walls again. Elbows are down on my body. Remember, if your elbows are up here, you're definitely not gonna get the center. This is one tool. If you separate this from this, two tools. Stop our wheel push down on the center. As your cylinder gets taller, your walls may be thicker, so therefore your floor is gonna have to get thicker. So if I was to make an eight pound cylinder, maybe my floor is three quarters of an inch without a foot. Wheel going fast again, go back and just sort of compress that hole you just made. And now we wanna open up. Again, this hand is gonna come out with it and it's angled perpendicular. You're really only touching the clay with this, this is just helping to guide it. And now you can go down with two fingers or maybe three. Maybe three gives you a little bit more stability, a little bit more strength. And I'm gonna open up. Again, don't get distracted by all the stuff going on on the inside. You can compress that floor. Again. So you can see on the inside there, I've got sort of this um, right angle on the inside corner and my lip is thick. All right, so now we're gonna do that corrective pull. Our wheel was going super fast. Now we wanna slow it down. Now, when I have a larger piece of clay, maybe I wanna do um, a little bit of a collaring to start. If I start to pull up over here, it's possible that my walls may start to go out. So what I'll do is I'll do this simple little like full hand claw. So my left hand goes back here. I'm gonna use the heel of this hand to just sort of see my wrist. I'm just gonna push that in. Notice my two hands are touching here. We don't want to be two different tools. And I'm just going to go in, push that in, maybe take my fingers and just roll my right hand over, slowly take off. So now what I've done is I've told the clay that this is the direction I wanted to go in. When it was sort of flailing out like that, it might start to go out. But you still want to make sure that the inside here is as wide as what you started so that's why you had your fingers inside and you rolled it over. 
Some people may use two hands. If you use two hands, make sure those two hands are attached. This gives it two separate pieces of information. This gives it one. So now we're gonna do that corrective pull. No pressure here, lots of pressure here, and no pressure here. Start down on the bat. Now, increasing the size of my tools. On the inside, I'm actually using two fingers and I'm having them right next to each other, not like this. I'm gonna use a little bit more. I use my middle finger and my pointer finger on the outside sometimes, depends. And with this first pull, again, lots of pressure in the center there. And now no pressure. And again, I don't wanna meet here. I wanna meet up here. Compress that lip. Start down on the bottom again, and now our walls are even, so we can really start to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, many of you may feel like you wanna stop your wheel at this point. I really don't think you should. You're at a really nice pulling speed right now, and if you stop that wheel, chances are when you start that wheel back up again, you're gonna end up going 100 miles an hour, and if your walls are super thin, they're gonna start to bellow out. That's in tripodal force again. So that was three pulls. I'm gonna go in there and get the water out just so in case it gets a little taller. I'll have a little bit more of a... Now, when you're dealing with two pounds, you don't have to slow down as quickly because your walls are a little thicker. So they have a little bit more uh, resilience. I don't think I ever used the word resilience in my videos. It's one of my favorite words next to empathy. All right, so what I would say is I think that for this size and for what I like in my mugs and my pots in general is this thickness is a desired thickness, but I'm gonna go ahead and sort of just thin out the bottom a little bit more, pay attention to a little more pressure there. And then because I feel like the top is fine, I'm just gonna fake it, I'm not gonna do anything. You can see I actually have a little bit of a thin spot there. Now, for those of you who wanna make this super straight, you can take a plate rib the shorter version of this, I'm gonna cheat a little and be lazy, and put it up against the side here, push it up against that tool, and start to go up. Notice what I do with the top of this tool when I get to the top. I don't just take it off now, I wait until I'm all the way off the pot. Compress that lip. point go ahead yell at me call it a pot Mel call it a pot I don't know why I'm being a perfectionist this morning all right I'm gonna go ahead and grab that wood tool and take that off oh moved a little too fast fix that lip a little bit and there's my two pound cylinder okay everybody here's my one pound on the orange bat Here's my two pound on the brown bat. Could these have been bigger? Yes, they can. Um, I, again, mentioned before, I don't like super thin pots. I, it's not me being lazy, I just don't like to break things. So this is um, approximately about five inches by four inches. This is about five inches, six inches by four, by five inches. I don't know, I probably should measure these. Either way, you guys can see, um, that they significantly increase in width and in height. Uh, one of the most important things to notice is the differences in how I threw them. So I, with the, with the one pound, I did not cone up. I used my one thumb to open up. I used just my sort of pointer and my middle finger to pull my walls. And I did in a bit of less walls, uh, less pulls. So there's my inside, I didn't really wire well on the bottom. That's that thin spot I actually talked about when I was pulling the wall, it's amazing what you remember. And um, this is sort of the height. So if I could have just gotten this into this, it probably would have been a little better, but that's fine. There's sort of the inside of that. Do this exercise, um, make a lot of cylinders, cut them open, investigate what you did wrong. See if you remember. Were you mindful when you messed that pot up when you were pulling? 
Okay, oh, I got a little floppy here, sorry. And I cut unevenly, so you really can't see. But sort of an, a consistent wall there. We're aiming for this sort of angle. If I was trimming, I would just have to take off a little bit there. So again, this one a little thicker than you might like, but this is my desired thickness for everything. Remember, a five pound pot is still weighs five pounds, even if it's an inch taller. So maybe if we would have went a little taller, it would have gotten a little bit higher. <clears throat> Remember that with my two pounds, I used more finger. I opened with two thumbs and I had my wheel going just a little faster. And that allowed me to be to do this in the same amount of pulls as I did the one pound. So I hope that that helps. Go out, make yourself five balls of clay, make yourself three one pounds, and then two two pounds. It's what we do here at Mud Clay Studio. We actually do a thing called Cylinder Boot Camp where our members throw 12 pots. And in the end, they're throwing a two pound ball in three pulls. And they're always amazed at the speed and the height and the aggressiveness um, they get from doing the same thing over and over. So do your own Cylinder Boot Camp. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share it with friends, and uh, put in the comments what other videos you want to see. I see that some people like the basics, some things people like a little bit more complex. People love when I mess up too, so that's kind of fun. Have a great day.